But I never Absolutely. thought the Shark Tank would be a pop sensation, or, you know, like, like that. I just yeah. thought it was going to be kind of like 60 Minutes. All right, so you've always wanted to be a businessman since you were young, but then it really turned into you being on TV. Did you ever want to be on TV? I did want to be on TV at first, but I happened to grow up in Hollis, Queens, where for some reason in Hollis, Queens, this little small area, mm -hmm. um, came majority of the hip hop artists in the 80s and 90s. You know, I would see Run DMC, Drown on Block, or Salt and Pepper, or LL Cool J, the guys from Onyx would be my, my barbers, or uh, Ja Rule, we hung out down the block, uh, Waka Flocka lived three doors Hold away on. from me, wow. um, Intro, uh, some of the fat boys lived there, Tribe Called Quest, uh, anybody and everybody, right? I was, on, I was on the first major national tour called the Fresh Fest, and I remember being on that tour about 14 years old, just pushing around speakers, and it was like uh, Rock Camp Public Enemy and all these other acts, and I wanted to be, hopefully, one day on TV. I was a break dancer earlier on. I remember audition with Houdini. They said they would take me on tour, and I was around 15, 16, and my mother said, hell no, you ain't going on a goddamn tour. Because um, I was, when I was on tour, I would just go and drive my car when they're in like Troy, New York, or actually, when they were over at the Civic Center here, I would yeah. drive my car up and just hang out and then go back home. But right. So she didn't want me on an actual tour bus on tour. So some kid out of, out of Atlanta I never heard of until 10 years later would take my place on the Houdini tour. His name was uh, Jermaine Dupree. He would end up taking my place on that Houdini tour. I say all that to say that I wanted to be in the public light, but then after knowing all these artists and seeing them out, um, back then where it wasn't about pictures, they would, you know, LL would be maybe sitting across the table from his wife having a nice private dinner. Maybe they were upset at each other have an argument people just get in his face and ask for autographs and yeah. it was uncomfortable to see that and then I would end up having FUBU and being somewhat in the public light and I just didn't want to do that so I had said that maybe hopefully one day I could be on TV and be more like you know a newscaster a Walter Cronkite or something like that because you know you don't see people walking up to newscasters going yeah. crazy yeah. Right? right but the newscasters depends on what kind of news you watch they're giving potentially hopefully vital information to make you a little smarter and I wanted to be that well, so I took the job on Shark Tank and ah. I became that, but I never Absolutely. thought the Shark Tank would be a pop sensation or, you know, like, like that. I just yeah. thought it was going to be kind of like 60 minutes. Yeah. So in the beginning, I heard that you didn't believe in Shark Tank at all. You're like, this is no. the stupidest, stupidest idea in the world. Yeah, because, you know, <laughs> listen, if somebody tells you, all right, you, you sell solar. If somebody said to you, hey, we're just going to record you trying to sell solar all day. Yep. I'm not sure how exciting it could be. I'm sure there's obviously challenges, but maybe I was too close to it. I'd be like, oh, yeah. that, that shit ain't gonna work. Thanks for watching. I wish you love and power your life. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. Check you later.